Hello everyone. Johnny goes out and buys cocaine and heroin from Tommy. And later he dies from a lethal combination of the cocaine and heroin. Do we have drug-induced homicide now? What are your thoughts on drug-induced homicide? Is Tommy responsible for Johnny's death? How many people think so? Or is it Johnny's problem because he was a drug user and he wanted drugs? Well, that would be a tough question to answer. We all have our thoughts on that until it happens to a member of your family. If a member of your family, a brother or sister, or daughter or son, passes away due to drug-induced homicide, buying bad drugs from Tommy, would you want them prosecuted? Hi, I'm Gary York, True Prison Stories, and thank you for watching my channel, and please subscribe if you like this video. I'd like to talk about a topic that is very controversial. There are many thoughts on this. Uh, many people, of course, are against the death penalty 100%, so they would say no to the death penalty for drug-induced homicide. But they would probably still say yes to life sentence in prison, the most of them, from surveys that have been done, not nationwide, just surveys here and there, indicates that the majority of people say death penalty is not warranted but life in prison. But we don't know how we would truly feel unless it happens to us. Our prisons are full of kingpin drug traffickers. And their drugs are out there on the streets killing over a hundred people a day. So I gave you a scenario about a street dealer named Tommy. We have witnesses, we have cell phone call connections, we have text messages describing what they're coming to pick up. So should Tommy be prosecuted for drug-induced homicide? Many of these cases are prosecuted. In the last five years in our country, the prosecutions for these type of cases are on the rise. And many, many states, we have 20 states right now that have the drug-induced homicide law. There are 13 more states fighting to get stronger laws and the drug-induced law. So right now there's 20, 13 more fighting to get it. And it's becoming an epidemic. People are dying across this country at an alarming rate from these types of deaths. So you have your street dealers that are the ones normally getting caught for drug-induced homicide because they're the ones selling it to you or the person on the street. But now we have the kingpins also. In 1988, the federal government put a law into effect uh, that kingpin drug dealers, when proven that their drugs are killing people on the streets, can be uh, arrested and sentenced to death for drug-induced homicide. Not many cases have been prosecuted for that matter, but there have been some. And I'd like to know your thoughts on that. Should kingpin drug dealers, if the evidence is there, that their drugs were delivered and were the cause of an epidemic death in the streets of Dallas or the streets of Tampa, Florida, or anywhere, if you can prove that, do you agree they should be charged with murder under that law and sentenced to death? Or do you think they should only get life in prison? They need to get something, that's for sure, because they're killing a lot of people in our country. And our prisons are getting loaded with drug kingpins now that we have more intelligence and more uh, equipment to track and not only catch the dealer on the street, but we're getting advanced now where we can catch the big cartel dealers and the big kingpins and get them put away and put in jail. Look at El Chapo. We finally got him. It took a while, but we finally got him. Should El Chapo be sentenced to death under the drug-induced homicide law? Well, I forget, it, that would be under the federal law, and that law was passed in 1988, and it can be done. 
Uh, in March of 2018, President Trump has asked our prosecutors to step up the sentencing under this law and step up the death penalty for drug kingpins. Who agrees with that and who does and why? I'm not an expert. I'm just stating facts that are out there, facts that are there. Um, uh, we all may know someone close that has had this happen. Um, their thoughts would are, uh, are right on with the family members being totally involved in it. Their thoughts would probably have a lot of input on how the prosecutors go and how the prosecutors prosecute these cases. It's a very touchy situation. You know, there's 32 countries in our world right now that impose the death penalty for drug smuggling, not just the big kingpins. Uh, seven of those countries routinely execute people. And I'm not saying we should be like them. I'm just stating again some of the facts. Uh, China, Indonesia, Iran, Saudi Arabia, Vietnam, Malaysia, and Singapore routinely execute drug smugglers. And Saudi Arabia, of course, is the most strict. They use beheading, and they use beheading even for the use of cannabis or marijuana. And I'm definitely not saying that's what we need to do, but I'm just telling you that that's what some countries do. Now there's even a big boom in the bumper sticker uh, market. Uh, there's bumper stickers out there that say, shoot your local heroin dealer. I personally would not put that on my vehicle. I would put a bumper sticker on my vehicle that says, report your local heroin dealer to the authorities and let them handle it because what good does it do for you to shoot your local heroin dealer and then you go to prison for the rest of your life. You need to be home with your family. So uh, I know some people put those stickers on in haste and, and, and out of anger because something probably or maybe has happened within their family, but um, maybe tone it down to report your local heroin dealer to the authorities. Uh, this issue is, is big. You may not hear about it every day, but it affects people every day. Hundreds of people. The average is a hundred people being killed a day in this country by drugs. And how many families does that affect? Something we really need to look at. So, you know, there's 13 more states out there trying to get on with this uh, case. The skyrocket, it's skyrocketed in the last five years, this type of prosecution. And, you know, with all that said, there was a survey done. There's been many surveys, a small survey with 290,078 votes. And the question uh, on the survey was, um, do you believe in the death penalty for drug-induced homicide? And 68% said no. 32% said yes. And of those 32% who said yes, they said, with proof with solid evidence that the drugs from Tommy killed uh, Johnny in that type of situation. Now, that's a small number of, of votes, 290,078. We don't know where they came from. Um, what do you think would happen if it was a nationwide vote, put to nationwide vote, this entire country votes on the death penalty for drug-induced homicide? What are your thoughts? My thoughts are it would be real, real close. It would be real close. Like 50%, you know, to 48%, 2% undecided. I don't know. But I think it would be very, very close. So let me know your thoughts on that. And just something to think about. Drug-induced homicide happens every day. Families are affected by it. What should we do? Life in prison? or death penalty. Thank you for your input. True Prison Stories, Gary York. Please subscribe.